help me welcome the very, very funny John Barrett. Woo! Thanks. Uh, so in 35 years, when um, Interscope Records releases a complete uh, remastered discography of Limp Bizkit, uh, and, and Activision puts out their limited edition Limp Bizkit rock band, uh, what do you think we're going to be talking about most? Are we going to be talking about Fred Durst as a pioneering pop lyricist? Or are we going to be talking about uh, Wes Borland as a uh, forward-thinking fashion icon? <laughs> or are we going to be talking about their legendary performance on the roof of TRL? <laughs> uh, mostly what I'm looking forward to is, um, is being able to listen to uh, songs like Nuki uh, the way they were originally intended to be heard, <laughs> and not the way we've been listening to them all these years, uh, like a chump. Uh, so, so I'm a Catholic, uh, yeah, yeah, give it up, but not before marriage. And um, as a Catholic, I'm privy to all the thoughts, feelings, and actions of Pope Benedict, and we all are, and um, I'm sure, it's, of course, as Catholics, you all know, because he thought it, um, that the internet is, the internet and in general, and Facebook in particular, are bad but should be used by the church for the greater good. So they, uh, they set up a Facebook account for Benedict. And uh, it's weird, he's a little behind because you know, he's an old guy. Um, and his, uh, like, his music is just anything but country. Um, his relationship status is it's complicated with the entire body of Christ's church. Uh, he doesn't list a religious preference, which uh, begs the question, is the Pope Catholic? <laughs> and he has a really nasty habit of untagging himself in childhood photos. <laughs> um, you guys remember, it was like right before um, the health care bill passed, and there was like a congressman from Michigan, and he said, if any of the U.S. taxpayer money goes to funding abortions, um, I am not going to support this bill. Um, did any of you think like I did, um, Mr. Obama, you can charge me personally more money if you guarantee me that that money will fund abortions? <laughs> because I fucking love abortions. <laughs> um, so who here has a, uh, a spirit animal? Anyone? Yeah. I bet mine's cooler than yours, though. It's the blanket octopus. It's an Australian octopus. It's, um, it's very small, and it's notable for two reasons. One is the way it reproduces. It, um, it fills up one of its uh, tentacles with sperm, then rips that tentacle off and hands it to the female one. <laughs> the second reason it's notable is that um, the, the defense mechanism, it's developed over thousands of years of evolution, or from the hand of God. And, um, <laughs> What happens is uh, it's immune to the poisons in um, the, the Portuguese man of war jellyfish. So like it can just rip off those stingers and just whip any attacker into submission. Um, and the reason that um, I've chosen this particular animal is that I live in a Portuguese neighborhood. <laughs> so if I'm getting attacked, I just find one of my neighbors rip his arms off and beat back my attacker. It's, it's really effective, actually. Um, so I just graduated from college. And, um, yeah. and you know, college isn't for everyone. They tell us that all the time. Um, but I wish when they were telling us that, they would stop bringing Bill Gates into it. Because, yeah, college wasn't for Bill Gates. But college wasn't for Bill Gates in a completely different way than college wasn't for most people I know who college wasn't for. It's not like Bill Gates sort of partied his way through high school, you know, barely got into SUNY nowhere, and then flunked out after the first semester because he was boozing too hard. Bill Gates worked really hard in high school, got into Harvard University, found that its curriculum wasn't challenging enough, 
and then founded the most successful company in the history of either companies or success. Um, another thing about college, how many of you know this, I guess it's like an urban legend, uh, that if your roommate kills himself, uh, you, get, you get a 4.0. Right. Did any of you ever think about it? Like, like I could make this look good. I could sell it. Actually, I also found that it was a good, like, preventative measure against suicide because, um, you know, there were some dark times in college, I'm sure for all of us, and uh, my darkest times were the times when I had the crappiest roommate. And I'm a person motivated primarily by spite. Um, so I'd be sitting there, you know, in just the depths of, you know, at the worst it got, you know, felt dark, there was no way out. But tomorrow's another day, and uh, there's light at the end of the tunnel. And even if that's all bullshit, I do not want to give that fucker a 4.0. <laughs> Anyone here uh, interested in the reproductive habits of ducks? Yeah. yeah. It's a fascinating world, I believe. Uh, there's one particular species of duck that I know well, way too much about. And, um, <laughs> They pair off every year, like that's, and then after pairing off, there are um, about three male ducks for every one female duck left. So three male ducks uh, will pick a female duck and pester her to the point of exhaustion, at which point they'll take turns having their way with her. Now, to, 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 yeah. to ameliorate this, uh, the female duck has evolved a false vagina on either side of her real vagina. And her real vagina is this real intricate set of like false paths and dead ends and corkscrews and it's really complex and labyrinthian. And few sperm make it to the end. And those that do have to battle a minotaur. And it's, it's interesting because, you know, when you think of the rapist of the animal kingdom, you don't think of the duck. You think of the Indonesian rape monkey. <laughs> but that's a misconception because the Indonesian rape monkey is actually a caring and gentle lover. <laughs> and not to make this too, too much about animal reproduction. But do you guys know that dolphins have sex for pleasure? Like they're one of the few other animals that do that. And they also proposition humans for sex. You're like the, the male dolphin will be more forward about it. Uh, he'll swim up to you and he'll uh, wrap his 10 to 14 inch prehensile penis <laughs> around your wrist <laughs> like a 10 to 14 inch prehensile slap bracelet. <laughs> and um, I mean, I can neither condemn nor condone this, but if you wanted to reciprocate, <laughs> just be aware uh, that that the dolphin has a, it ejaculates with the force of so much dolphin ejaculate coming out of a cannon. A 10 to 14 inch prehensile cannon. Um, but uh, you can, you know, there's a subtle warning sign. You know, he offers a little bit of a preview before the end of the show. And uh, it's really subtle. You have to really watch out for it um, because you're all going to do this. And he, uh, he sort of, pulls back his flippers, um, arches his back, and then he looks you dead in the eye and says, I'm gonna fucking come! <laughs> Thank you very much.